Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be doing some sublimation and I'm going to teach you how to sublimate on mouse pad. Now I needed a small little mouse pad for my warehouse so that I could use it on a really rough surface for my desk so I don't ruin my mouse. So at the same time I thought let's go ahead, we're going to come up with a cool little picture we'll find on the internet that's free. We're going to sublimate this, I'll explain to you how I did it. Thereafter we're going to go straight to our laser engraver, then we're going to cut it out and then hopefully we'll get it overlocked so it looks really really nice. So the first thing we need to do is see how big we need to make our design, set our design up so then we can go straight to print and then sublimate afterwards. So I've got quite a big portion of mouse pad here. I'm not going to be using the entire thing for where I need it on my desk. I'm going to be using this portion here where it's a bit messed up as my test print first. Always got to run a test print first through your heat press to make sure that your pressure is correct. Otherwise you're going to keep throwing it away and waste money. So I only need half of this so we'll design two portions to print here and then we'll send through the first portion to test the pressure and then finally send through the one I actually need. So let's measure and get our design on our screen. So we've got a height of 200 and our widths are going to be 300 each. Okay. If you want to make sure that you've got the best color output from your printer when doing sublimation and you're not too worried about Pantone colors, my recommendation is you design in RGB and not CMYK. For some reason the RGB colors come out a lot more vibrant and dense compared to CMYK which is specifically meant to do your Pantone colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my design as RGB, which I have done already. Now we're gonna just go and find our pre-located image that we found earlier. Now I've gone ahead and I've picked this picture for one particular reason, purely because it has a lot of nice, vibrant red and blue. And we also want to do away with most of our dirt on this mouse pad so I'm going to use most of this as black background and that is going to make sure that the rest of our colors pop so beautifully when we print this. Okay so now we have to keep in mind like I said earlier we're going to then laser engrave or cut out this portion of mouse pad so we will then save a particular image just to do the outside border. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select our tool with rounded edges. We're going to put it over our image to see exactly where we want it so that we can save two portions here. We're going to make sure that we've got no background. We're going to go with a red border, make sure it's thick enough. 10 points should be fine. Now we're just going to go ahead and center them both. And from here, we're gonna minimize our border because I do not want to print the border. All I want the border there is purely for us to laser engrave it later. I'm gonna save it as a completely normal JPEG. I'm not going to embed any color profiles. Now what we're gonna do is hide our first layer and open up the second layer because all I want is that particular background just the outside border now we're going to save this as a bitmap because that's how it's going to be read in our cutting program want to make sure you save it was 24 bits not 32 and there we are all we need to do now is go ahead to our sublimation printer we're going to print out two of the identical copies from there, we're going to sublimate and then go straight to our laser program to set up that border that I've just created.
Okay guys, now that we've gone ahead and we've printed our design in reverse, because remember, you want it the right way around. Remember when you're doing sublimation, you always have to do everything in reverse because it's being applied from one angle to the right angle on your material. So now, whenever you're going to be doing something like this that is either waterproof, extremely thick, and has lots of crease marks, you wanna shove your item through the press first to flatten it out. Now, all you gotta do is simply just put it in and just let it come through and try and make sure that you don't do it too fast, otherwise you'll create your own creases. Now, I've already gone ahead and I've done that myself just so that we can get further in the video. So now that that's done, I'm going to then cut it up and make sure that my mouse pad is bigger than my print so that we don't get print onto our drum so that we don't have to use protection paper. Okay, so now I always make sure that my paper is on the bottom and my material is on top purely because I want my paper making contact with that really, really hot drum so that it warms up and it actually has the ink bursting off of it onto our mouse pad. So we're gonna put this over and make sure that it is actually bigger because I don't feel like having any ink transferring to my drum. So now that I've done that, we're just gonna slowly and before I go, I'm trying to do this more towards the middle of the press because, okay. Now before I put this in, I'm doing this more towards the middle. It's not exactly in the middle, but the closer you have it to the middle, the more even the print is gonna be because if I'm putting it in just on this side, that means the mat is gonna be tight to this side and loose to that side and it sometimes is going to give you an irregular print because it's not the same width as the entire drum. So we're gonna move it over just a smidge and we're gonna put it in and just make sure it goes in nice and easily. And there we go. Keep in mind that this is extremely hot so you do not wanna burn yourself. And make sure your paper does not go back into the drum, otherwise it'll just keep rotating. And it most likely will because the static from the paper will cause it to do so. Okay, so as you can see, our print was successful and we do not have any funny crease marks that I am unaware of. We had a little bit of a, a spot there that's just due to some fabric being between the paper and our material, but we've got no crease marks and this came out as a solid colored print. There's no difference in color between the black here and over there, so I know that my pressure was correct. So that being said, we're gonna move over to our cleaner piece of material. We're gonna redo this one so that we've got a really good looking piece of mouse pad without any imperfections, because we always wanna make sure we do tests. Okay, so we finally have got our final product here. And you know, besides all of the slight imperfections from the mouse pad that you could see before, again, our color is even throughout. We've got a really nice deep red, a deep blue, and we've got the whites coming out. Keep in mind that the actual white of this material is more of a blue color, so you will affect your whites overall, but my perfect example of what a mouse pad should be is something similar to this. So now let's just talk about our pressure and the machine and its settings because that's exactly what we're here for. I've gone ahead and I've used this machine at 230 degrees and 70% speed going forward not backwards. Now I allowed this machine to warm up for 45 minutes at that temperature before I even thought about putting my material in. Why? Because you have to make sure that your mat stays warm and that it actually retains the heat. So if you switch on your heat press and it gets to 230 degrees within 15 minutes, 
good because that is exactly how it's supposed to work but you'll find that if you put something through you'll have virtually no income off your paper and onto your material why because your mat hasn't reached the same temperature as your drum so you have to make sure that you leave that time to warm up otherwise you will not get perfect results now let's talk about pressure now I have not changed my pressure since my previous video when I did the t-shirt print test now with this I must say that your pressure needs to be just tight and not too loose if you have it too loose you'll find lots of areas will have little blotched areas where ink will not come through and it'll look like you poured water onto your paper so when you're heat pressing something like this I always put through that first test sample without the paper to make sure it doesn't crinkle my material if you find that when it comes out you'll find little lines of crinkled areas that means your pressure is too tight if you put it in and you find it's not too hot afterwards that means the pressure is too little so when you first do your test print like this one which we did i always recommend doing test prints first purely so that you could see whether or not your paper is crinkled from too much pressure and then you get crease marks going through where the ink does not show up whatsoever so all in all in order to come to a conclusion for the sublimation part make sure that you do your test beforehand and you don't need to necessarily change the pressure very often if you've already settled your mat in for those first 20 hours as we spoke so that meaning your pressure should stay the same and consistently and you won't need to change it very often as long as you do your tests correctly the test is what makes a difference if your test doesn't come out correct then you need to start fiddling with your settings all right guys now that we've done that particular part we're going to go over to our laser engraving program we're going to put our border in and then we're going to go ahead and cut this job so that we can get it overlocked so see you there now that we've got our program open we can now go ahead and go file import find our dxf open and then what we're going to need to do is go ahead and delete one of the inner lines and then make this bigger so we can see it just want to double check that our sizing is correct we want it a little bit smaller than our original image so that is perfectly fine we're going to leave it at 292 by 191 because it was 200 by 300 we're going to go ahead and we're going to go and push cut not scan because scan is engraved we're going to slow down our speed to around about 20 20 and then leave our power at 65 which is perfectly fine we're going to say okay and then we're going to insert a memory stick and then download it from there once you've put in your usb we're going to go over to file then we're going to try and go over to the setting that says U-Disk Plus. We're going to push Enter. We're going to push Enter again to read the U-Disk. And there's our file name there. We're going to go over and push Copy to Memory. Copy successful. So now we're going to go Escape. And then there's our file right at the top there. And you can see the shape and its settings are all already there. So we're going to go push enter. All right, now that we've put our program and our file in place, all we need to do is level our bed. So we set it up nicely to the correct um, height. From there, we're going to test cut the one on the right to make sure that the rectangle is in the right place. Then we'll go ahead and do our actual one on the left so we can get our actual mouse pad and the results we're looking for. Test our frame. Okay, so now that I'm comfortable exactly where it needs to be, I'm now going to put on my extraction pans and we're going to start cutting.
Okay, so this is exactly what I was looking for in terms of cutting. So now that I know this is going to be exactly what I'm looking for, we're gonna now do it on the correct mouse pad and then take it to overlocking. Okay, and there we have it. It's cut exactly to how I wanted it. Now all we need to do is take it to get overlocked and then we've got a final product. Okay guys, and there you have it. We have got two different versions of our mouse pad here. One that's overlocked over here and one that isn't. Now I'm going to quickly go over the differences between the two. Um, in terms of print, these prints came out fantastic. I must say for a very dirty and old piece of mouse pad, throwing down a new layer of ink over them certainly has brought a lot to this print. And the material itself is still in very good condition and the ink was accepted very, very well. I've got great color, very good definition and a lot of vibrance, especially in our reds and the blues. Now, when it comes to having something that is overlocked around the edges, you'll find that this allows it to last a hell of a lot longer. Now, what I mean by that is, especially when you've got your mouse pad down on a surface and you are moving your mouse back and forth a couple of times over a year, eventually the two layers of material and the actual rubber separates and then your mouse pad becomes unusable. So having the option of the two is nice. It doesn't make too much of a difference for price, but the overall finish of the overlocked one is my favorite and my preferred version of doing mouse pads purely because it has just this very, very nice sophisticated look where it's got the contrast difference between the mouse pad itself and the overlocked edge versus your normal mouse pad without. So this is something that you've got to keep in mind when doing your sublimatable goods. You need to be able to go what will finish your item off a lot better and what would sell better to your clientele. You've got to have that extra knowledge or go that extra mile to come up with two separate products. One that is going to look fantastic and the one that's going to look fantastic but not last nearly as long. But as for the sublimation, this ink will not deteriorate any time before your mouse pad will. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and this is how I sublimated it on mouse pad material and then gone and cut it with a CO2 laser afterwards to achieve the shape that I'm looking for. Thank you for watching.